this tutorial I want to start looking at audio in Premiere Pro. There's actually quite a lot to know about audio in Premiere Pro. You can see here I've got the audio mixer panel at the front here and there's been a redesign of the audio mixer panel, there's been a redesign of the monitor over here but there's also new tracks added and new ways of doing things. So we're going to spend a few videos going over lots of the changes and how to work with audio in Premiere Pro. One of the first things to say is that there has been a new type of track that's actually been added to Premiere Pro and to demonstrate this I'm going to create a new sequence. So I'm going to go to the new items button down here and click sequence and that's the right for my footage but I'm going to go to the tracks tab and at the top of the tracks tab it says create three video tracks which is fine and then it talks about audio tracks. Now at the moment we have the master which is your final output or if you like this this one here with a blue fader and you can change how it works so you can have a stereo version a mono version a 5.1 version and a multi-channel version now multi-channel versions are actually used for certain TV outputs where you want all the different channels from your audio to be mapped to different outputs say 4 8 12 sometimes even 16 these are often tape based outputs so you can take all the different feeds from your various microphones and put them on their own individual channels so that they're easier to separate out and monitor and change a later date so we'll go over multi-channel in just a moment but at the moment we've got a stereo master but if I look down here at my audio tracks it says I have got standard tracks and when I drop the little drop down here I don't actually have stereo as a standard track option. I've got a stereo submix, that's a slightly different thing, but I don't have a stereo option here, I just have this new standard track. And the thing about standard tracks is that they will cope with both stereo and mono on the same track. When, however, if you've got a standard track with a mono feed inside of it, you look at it over here in the mixer panel, it will still look like a stereo channel over here, but both the side, the left and the right, will go up and down together, be completely locked when it's mono, and you can still pan it left and right. So a standard track will cope with stereo and mono on the same track. So if you've got two pieces of video and you drop them together, and one of them's got a stereo feed, one of them's got a mono feed, and you put them side by side, the stereo and the mono will sit on the same track without any problems, but when you look at the feed, it looks like stereo over here, but you can still pan it as you wish. Okay, so that's the new standard track, which is a great advantage. It's just one item to think about for stereo and mono. You can still have a mono track if you want it, which rather than having two channels in here, we'll just have a single channel if you think that's what you want. And of course, we've got 5.1, which I'll come back to a bit later. So that's the new track type, the standard, which is the standard. It is the default setting. But also, as you can look at this panel, you've got various options. Now, for what I'm going to do next, I don't actually want Audio 3. So what I can do is just click, I don't want Audio 3, and you'll see the minus buttons come up here, get rid of Audio 3. If I want, I can also have these audio channels open when they come in. So rather than being closed up as this one is down here, as Audio 3 has got the little triangle shut, that little twirly triangle will be clicked open, and I'll be able to see the audio waveform if I wish when I drop channels in there. If you wish, you can actually start panning items straight away. So if you know that you're going to be dropping lots of mono tracks in, you want them on one side or the other, you could pan them. I'm not going to use that at the moment. So that's the standard. And if I like it, of course, I can save it as a preset by clicking on Save Preset, naming it, giving it a description, and having a preset available to load this very quickly. However, let's go back to this master here. When you create a sequence, you only get one shot at creating the master. That sequence will always have whatever you have made. So if I make a multi-channel master, it will always be multi-channel. I can't then go back into my sequence settings and change that after the event. But if you get it wrong, don't panic, because you can always go in and select all the clips, create a new sequence with the right settings, and just paste them in. So it's not the end of the world if you make a mistake. But let's have a little look at the multi-channel. And when you click multi-channel, this little button over here opens up and you can see that you have the opportunity to output to multiple channels, which is often used on a tape-based format for broadcast, where the broadcasters want to separate all the different feeds out onto multiple separate channels that can be mixed separately. Now, how would I actually use this? Well, what I might do with these two channels is have a four-channel master and then I'm going to have a stereo feed in audio one and a stereo feed in audio two. 
and I'll map it so that the right and left of audio 1 come out on 1 and 2 of the multi-channel master and the right and left of audio 2 will come out on 3 and 4 of my multi-channel master so that all four channels are separated out and can then be mixed down separately of course as long as you've got the appropriate equipment and the right, right formats to work with. So I'll just show you how to set that up by selecting a four channel master and then I need to change the channel type down here. At the moment they're at standards we now need to go to adaptive and when you click adaptive the mapping button opens up to us and we click on the mapping button. Now because we have a four channel master Premiere Pro is assuming that we've actually got four channels in each of our audio. Now obviously we don't, we've just got stereo feeds. So input 3 and input 4 for both of these two are nothing. We need to not actually have them output to anything. So what you can do is take this little drop down here and click none. And click none. So now for audio 1 what we're saying is input 1 or the right channel or the left channel whatever it is, is output to the first channel of my master. Input 2 is output to the second channel of my master, and I don't have an input 3 and 4. So I click OK on that, then I go to my second audio channel and take that to adaptive, click on the mapping button, and this time again I do not have an input 3 and 4, so I can take those to none. I just have input 1 and 2, but I don't want them going to output 1 and output 2. I actually want these ones to go to output 3 and output 4, because this is audio 2 and its right and left has got to go to the third and the fourth output so to change them you click down I want that to go to three but at the moment it says one and three so be careful just take it to one and the way I quite like to do it is actually to take that to none and then go right I want it to go to four and that's actually a slightly more obvious way of doing it click OK again if I want to save a preset I can name the sequence whatever I want to name it click OK and the sequence is created now the first thing to notice is over here I've got four channels in my mixer. Now I can actually pull in various waveforms. You can also see as I showed you before that audio 1 and audio 2 are open. So I'm going to go up to my audio and I'm going to bring in a piece of audio and as you can see it's open and we can see clearly channel 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 are just dotted lines because there is nothing in 3 or 4, there wasn't ever a 3 or 4 for this particular piece of audio, it was only ever stereo but because I've got a 4 channel master Premiere Pro is assuming I've got 4 channel audio clips it's ok, we can live with that and then I'm going to find another thing to add in which is just an introduction and now you can see that I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 on this one but these two are mapped and these two are mapped and they're going to channel 1, 2, 3, 4 so if I turn off at the moment the second audio clip, I've just got these two shown which means these two lines should actually play. So if I just click play on that OK, so 1 and 2 or right and left of this audio is actually being mapped to these two channels. Let me just play the music and show you on the other one. And then if you want to put them both together and push play OK, and you get a feel for how it works. By the way, if you've moved these buttons down here, this slider, I've moved it here and I want to get it back to zero, rather than trying to hit zero precisely, just double click it. it takes it directly back to zero for you. So that's how you can map channels. And if your mapping's wrong and you want to change it at any time, you've got the mapping option right here in the timeline. You can click on the mapping button and again you can get back and map this to however you want to map it. So those are the different types of audio track that you've got in Premiere Pro CS6. The important things to note again is you've got the standard which will cope with both stereo and mono on the same track and you've got the adaptive tracks but to be able to use the adaptive tracks you've got to have a master that's also set up with its various channel options here and of course you can go back in here and change it to 8 and 12 and 16 if you really want to. So you can actually change all of that right, right here in the audio mixer if you want to but obviously we just want 4. So those are the different tracks. In the next tutorial we'll have a very brief look at the 5.1 master option.